Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll show you how to create this popular font morph effect in After Effects without using any third-party plugins and without having to do any shape path manipulation. So let's dive right into it. So now in After Effects let's open up a new composition, let's call it font morph. Let's make it 5 seconds long, full HD, click OK. Let's add a new text layer and let's type in font morph again. And um, I've set it to be the source serif font for display. It's a nice italic serif font. And we're actually gonna be morphing to this font. But before we add a different uh, layer with a different font, let's just make sure we click left align text here in the paragraph tab and uh, choose the color that you wanna have for your text and align the text layer to be in the middle of the composition. Now to add the second layer, actually the first layer that we're gonna morph from, let's just split this layer by holding Control shift d and here we have the font morph 1 and we have the font morph 2. We're gonna morph from this font we're, that we're gonna change to a different one where I'll use Anik Devanagari semi-bold. So this is a bit more modern, it's a different font and I think the transition between these two would would um, look pretty nice. But before we do that, we actually need to kind of address the issue of these fonts having significantly different widths, meaning that morphing between these two, we are gonna have to work around that issue and we are gonna do that by actually playing around with the tracking animator that we can find in here, if we toggle this switch and go here to the animate tracking, we can actually see that we can play around with the tracking of these text layers. And the best way to actually see what's going on is to first decrease the opacity. We can actually do it like this, have one uh, fully opaque and one semi. And then let's play around with that um, animator one tracking amount. Also, let's add it for the uh, first layer for the layer that we are morphing from. Let's just use this. And an easy way to just show the tracking uh, portion is by typing in tracking here in the search. And we have these two layers with both the tracking amounts um, here that we're gonna keyframe. So let's just put on these stopwatches right away. And if we think about it, we wanna end up at this position for the second layer. So let's just move the keyframe at the end of this overlay animation. The duration of it we're gonna have to change later. It's um, probably gonna be a bit lo longer than these four frames. So let's just make it eight frames right away. And let's change these values. So first we have to think about um, this second layer that is gonna end up with this width. We're gonna have to change that width to match the first fonts with by changing the tracking amount to nine. And as you can see, now it's gonna actually start at the width of, at the tracking and the width of this first font and it's gonna end at its natural width. And we're gonna do the opposite for the font one where we are gonna put the tracking amount to minus nine at the end of this animation. And that way you can see that we actually kind of have them following each other. This one is starting at its natural position and it ends at this one's natural position. So that's a really important step to create that seamless flow and seamless transition between these two fonts. Uh, for now, let's just select these two. Let's just F9 them, uh, add a bit of easing to this animation. Now, the next step is actually gonna be working with the opacity values of these two layers. So we are gonna keyframe these opacity layers at 100 and we are gonna need the second layer to be at 100 at the end of this animation and the first layer to be at the 100% up until that transition animation and um, have them at zero, the first one at the end and the second one at the beginning of the animation. So we have this sort of morphing action going on and now you must be thinking what about the actual morph between these two this is not exactly what we what we came for um, we are gonna do that by adding a few effects on the adjustment layer that we're gonna place above these two um, layers and um, we're gonna start by adding some Gaussian blur let's just 
make it 25 for now. And by adding some levels, and by crunching down the alpha values of those levels so that we kind of find the averages between those font transition values and you get this sort of liquid morph type of effect that we are actually going for. Obviously, you are going to have to play around with these values so that it looks best for um, your font combination. Uh, and what we're going to have to do with the Gaussian Blur is actually to keyframe it and just make sure that at the beginning and at the end of this animation, it is at zero and in the middle, it actually is increased to 25, 35 or whatever actually works for your composition size, for your fonts. So we can see that right now we kind of have this liquidy type of effect morph that looks pretty good, actually pretty good, but we can play around with these values, maybe crunch, crunch them a bit more so that it, we make it a bit sharper. And an important thing to do is to actually just apply this adjustment layer above the animation itself because the crunching down the levels the alpha channel levels values can make these edges look a bit too sharp and that's why we want to minimize the effect of that by uh, using it only where needed and right now to play around with all of these values let's just click you and um, to show all the keyframes and let's just make it um let's just ease ease all of them and that is already looking pretty good as you can see this method was so quick and easy to do so i saw people doing it by using uh shape layers by turning each letter to a shape layer and then playing around with shape paths but honestly that is just so much more work for a result that wouldn't be all that much different, all that much better actually. You would still have to do some compromises because of the different layer shapes. So I think this way is the fastest and the easiest way to do it. But now to add a bit of character to this whole composition, let's just drag down this nice texture labs paper texture that I have. I linked it in the description below. And as always, I'm also including this whole project file for you to download for absolutely free. And now the funny thing that happens when you actually apply this adjustment layer to anything other than the text is that it's not going to do any good to you. You are going to have to actually um, pre-compose these two layers along with that adjustment layer. So let's just call it font morph texts. And that way you can actually have them on your nice paper background. And now if we go back into the uh, font morph composition, the great thing about this method is that you can very easily create another transition between another font. So let's just change this to, for example, a nice font that I like using and that can be Capitolina bold. And to do the font morph again, we would obviously need to um, open up these keyframes. You can duplicate everything to this new Font, open up the closing keyframes for the uh, font one and paste those closing keyframes to this second font. Make sure everything aligns, zoom in. You would have to play around with the tracking amounts. The easiest way is to actually bring back the opacity for uh, both of these at 100 and go here, adjust the tracking to be minus 13 here so that the second font matches the previous Font that we had the source serif font for display and then if this is at minus 13 this one needs to be at 13 for the font that we are changing to so you get the same follow me action going on between these two fonts and obviously we're gonna have to bring back the opacity transition to zeros let's delete these un unnecessary keyframes and you would just need to duplicate this adjustment layer, drag it over the these um, two fonts and their animation keyframes and voila, the same thing happens for two completely different fonts. And we can do it another time just to show you how quickly uh, it can be done by, by just pasting a few of those keyframes. And let's come back to the Onyx Devanagari semi-bold for this one and play around with the opacity levels again and the tracking amounts actually. So here we have it at 
five. We're gonna have it at minus five here then. And let's bring back the opacity values to what needs to be done for the animation. And drag this here. And we are morphing back to from where we started. We can actually end the composition here so that it is kind of morphing between these three pairs of of fonts. In this transition, I can see that the fonts are actually kind of getting too thick at a certain point. And you can fix that by adjusting the alpha values for the levels a bit so that we don't have that unnecessary thickening at a certain point. Obviously, for each one of these, you would need to play around with the blur and the levels values. It all depends on the sizes and font types and um, your personal preference. So if we go back to our main com. Let's add some nice lines, simulate a notebook look by adding some repeaters. Let's just make 15 copies and just make them go downwards. Something like this should work. Let's change the color to nice cold gray and let's make it uh, multiply, multiply as well, and um, put it behind, add a bit of roughened edges to both of these, so that we have a bit of a not natural look to both of them. Possibly we could even decrease the opacity to something like 75. I would also add rough edges to the font itself. What I'd like to do is to actually put it at the multiply a uh, blending mode so that we can kind of have a bit of texture going on on the text itself as well. Let's just shrink this um, composition as well. And let's add a bit of styling. Let's add an adjustment layer over this whole composition. Let's add a posterize time effect because I think then it looks even better. Let's add a vignette. Let's add it above the posterize. You can add it to your taste. Let's go with a simple 151. And you can also add a bit of noise, noise HLS auto, add it as a grain at 3% so that we have a bit of extra texture going on as well. And um, I would add a transform effect here as well. Let's make it 102 to zoom in a bit and let's Let's just add a slight jittery wiggle to the whole comp, but also make it a six frame uh, per second posterized time before we add the wiggle expression um, once every second for five frames. Now, what I think also really helps to sell this font morph is actually just a bit of nice movement in the font itself. So if we actually move the font a bit from the right hand side to the left, easy is then by clicking F9 and playing around with graph and creating like this type of a speed graph for those keyframes. I think this really helps to sell it. Uh, as well. And we can move it back for the last animation so that when looped. One thing that I also found to work nice for me is to just play around with the very simple invert effect. So if we just add an invert inf effect to this uh, layer, we would have to make it screen instead of multiply and also add that invert layer to the background itself and add a bit of deep glow to this font. Deep glow is a paid plugin. You could use the normal glow as well and achieve a pretty similar result. You could have something like this. Possibly you could even play around with the blending modes for the lines as well, maybe uh, have them be at screen. I found that doing these transitions um, right on the top of the uh, font morph effect is tends to look pretty nice actually. Another thing that I want to show you is what if you actually wanted to change the color of this text, for example. So if you were just to change the fill color of the layer itself, 
the transitions between the previous font and the previous text to it would look like this mixed liquid between those two colors effect which could work for some instances but if you wanted to have a uniform transition between the colors you would have to apply the fill effect to the adjustment layer select this color as the end color so you'd have to keyframe it and move that keyframe to the end of the animation and at the beginning of the animation you would have to actually take the code of from this first color from this first layer's color and apply it to to this fill effect that way you would get a constant transition between the colors and you would have to do the same for this adjustment layer as well except you would just have to switch the keyframes around so that it starts with the red color and ends at the gray color that we want. So if we take a look at the final result, you can see that this is how it looks in the end. Essentially, that is it. You know, I even showed you a few extra steps to achieve some looks that I find really pleasing for this, this effect. As always, you have this project in the description below to download for free. I hope you did enjoy this video and please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.